before we begin this fight, I would like to give a very big thank you to Gacha Hobby Center. Uh, you can check them out both on Facebook and on YouTube. They are the ones who edited these three final games for the DFUC. And as you will see, they look absolutely amazing. Like, I'm amazed just looking at them myself. Such a big thank you to them for doing all this work. They volunteered to edit it and, you know, I couldn't be happier after seeing the final result. So please do check them out for more amazing edited fights like this one. So, without any further ado, let's get into the first game of the DFUC Finals. Hello and welcome everyone! So today we have the finals, game one of the finals of the FUC, or the fuck if you prefer. So we will be commentating all three games and I will also be co-commentating with Zai. Hello, so uh, my name's full name is Zisral, you might know me as Ben Anuwarakan. I'm a player from the UK, I'm also in Different Fights Discord so come check us out there. Uh, I'm here with him, help I helped him run the event and now here we are just talking about the games, giving you guys good commentary hopefully. Now, even though these are two time leap decks uh, facing off against each other, they are quite different. You can already see that from the very start in their starter choice. Yeah, so we see that Yves on the left, so Yves on the right is playing Chrono Dran, as most players are, while Jay on the left is playing Chrono Dran G, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, so picking up on the first turn, uh, Yves goes into the Meshkia and just puts his Dran to the back and passes turn. And now, yeah, he's just gonna respond with the uh, Melum. And there's a great 2 that he just checked that is also something that we don't see a lot of uh, timely players go into. Yeah, so the Lugula. Yeah, really so. Interesting card. Yeah. And Eve did get the uh, draw on damage now with the History Maker. It's a PG, and there's a crit in the damage zone of J. So, so far, it's been a pretty standard uh, first couple of turns. Now he goes into that great 2 that we mentioned. Uh, and the which, history maker as well. Yeah, and the history maker. So it's not going to do much yet, but he is pushing for damage. So he's going a bit more aggressive. Uh, probably going to try out and try and close out the game on first try. He gets himself a Tiger G on drive check, and there's a stand, uh, which is going to be the only Urwatar from the deck. So that turns off a little bit of the draw power from uh, Eve's side. So that's definitely going to be a little bit impact impactful. We can see now that uh, Eve is responding with. A great, you know, slight grade two stall with equal aggression back. So we now that Jay does have two counter blasts, so he can Sabreeze if he wants. The question is, does he have the piece in time to go for it? We see he doesn't. Yeah. Pulls the steam breath. Yeah. Changes his Tiger into a Chrono Jet G. Yeah. And we're probably going to see both players sit on grade two for a bit longer while they try and set up their pieces for first stride. Yeah. And we can see uh, Jay's mascot flying around as he uh, mentions in the game. Uh, but, you know, it's not, not the biggest deal. So, yeah, it's going to be just a little bit of grade 2 stall. You know, it does make sense. It is the mirror match, and in the mirror match especially, whoever takes first try is most likely going to be the one that takes the game. So there's a tick away in the drive and a 10k vanilla in the damage, and then he blocks the second attack from Jay's side. So... That tick away is, gonna, is pretty huge in this particular matchup, where if you don't end games on first try, the game can go on for a really long time, and recycling this card is important. Yep, and now we can see Eve is going to go into the Sabreeze, so he did go into the Chrono Jet G, and uh, he hasn't discarded yet for the cost. That was a draw trigger from the last... Uh, um, the shield. Yeah, yeah, the last shield. So now, yeah, I think he will have to get a... Yeah, he does get reminded to discard. Yeah, there we yeah, go. There he drops is. the uh, ZTB uh, draw trigger. So we see he's called uh, Melem, so he's got at least one of his pieces ready to go. Obviously, because Sabreeze is a Cradle Mentor, he doesn't get the stride skill of Chrono Jet G, but even Melam on its own is like a really... It's one of the better first things you can do on the first ride. Yeah, exactly. And he gets the TikTok as well, so this is going to be our usual Melam TikTok combo that we're pretty used to seeing, so he's not going to have to eat up any Carol Blast uh, for now to get out quite a few attacks. So here comes his 16 to Vanguard, and Jay's going to take that, and go. there goes his second Tiger. So he does run two, because one of them is does have the hot stamp, so we can at least recognize it through that. But yeah, some players run one, he decided to go with two. It is a solid uh, card, does give you a little bit of control, and as well as just more combos. So we see here that uh, Eves uh, time leaps Melon into Delayed Blazer rather than History Maker, because he's already got one Delayed Blazer on the field, so you can just turn that into a Tiger G really easily, as opposed to having to spend the Counter Blast on History Maker, which isn't going to hit. Exactly. Because obviously his uh, Watar is in the damage, and he's already used this TikTok, he just goes for the heart bump to get an extra draw to yeah, really push yeah. his lead. Yeah, because there's no reason to really go for anything else when he doesn't have any Orotars left. So I think that's pretty much the best case scenario for him right now. So, 
Uh, let's see, Jay's gonna uh, drop the heal, so not G guard because he is only on grade 2. We've but... seen that both players at this point have vanilla guarded with a heal, which is quite interesting. Yeah, of course, that's true. Gear Chronicle can recycle heal, so that's not a big deal for them. Yeah, exactly. It's not exactly the most, of, like, the biggest concern uh, as with, is with other decks, but he did drop the TikTok for guarding. Uh, so that's quite interesting, but again, he can also recycle that, yeah. but it looks like he chose not to use it now. And Eve does Soul Blast his TikTok, so he'll be able to recycle that as well and get off more attacks. So, so he's yeah. done this combo here where... So Chrono Jet Tiger G's skill is that after GB1, after it attacks the Vanguard, you can Soul Blast 1 uh, and bind one of your rear guards. If you do, you... I think it's put something on the bottom of Zona's deck. So we see yeah. here he's targeted his own Chrono Drant to get Chrono Drant's skill off. Yeah. And he's probably going to bottom deck the Chrono Drant G on... J side, I believe. Yeah, most likely. So this is one of the combos, interesting combos that we see with Time Leap, which is really interesting because obviously Time Leap's all about extending its combo, getting extra attacks, but it's also very self-serving, like it can just fuel itself, it doesn't need to play off the opponent. Yeah, that's very true. So, oh, there goes another vanilla heal. So I guess he just didn't have much else, looking at his hand, he has an Uratar, and I guess he's just gonna, you know, call that and... Uh, Takes the Supreme's, yeah. yep. Yeah. So, gets the draw trigger. Yeah, that was a bit risky. That could have the game could have ended there potentially, but Eve didn't get a single trigger from his uh, drive check, and now we have the Jet G on Jay's side, and he's gonna stride with his Tiger G. So now he doesn't have any other great threes in hand. We did see a 10k vanilla and a draw trigger, and the Urwatar I think is the last card in his hand. So he's gonna go into the Fate Rider, which we don't see that much of these days. Yeah, it's interesting because most of the time you'd rather just play Metallica Phoenix because they both basically do the same thing. The only difference is that Fate Rider gives you a bit more control over the timing because it's an act rather than an attack auto. And we can see that here, especially because Jay doesn't have many cards in hand, he needs to set up his combo before he attacks. Yeah, and there's also the thing with Metallica Phoenix that you can't use it with Jet G. So yep. there is that Whereas little problem. With Fate Rider you, you can't. can't yeah. It's a gear dragon, yeah. yeah, so that's why he went for that and you could use like he could take the Uratar from his hand and immediately just plus off of it. Turn into so, a melon, which then yeah. used the Fate Rider just to get his uh turn his steam breath into this history maker. So for basically he went from having a dead hand to having a live combo in on play, which is really good. Yeah, exactly. So he's showing exactly why this fight is still quite viable even in today's meta. It will probably change uh, once we get GBT eleven. Uh, in English, with the upcoming uh, Avenue Phoenix stride, I think it was called Avenue yes. Phoenix. Yes. So the, uh, better Golden Rain and Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now he's swinging with just eleven, I believe, with his Melon. Yeah. And there goes the first G guard, most likely gonna be a Hetra round. Yeah. Yes, there it goes. So it's the beautiful SP Hetra round, and he's gonna Soul Blast the Chrono Dran to be able to recycle that again later on. And goodbye to the history maker. So Jay does have to shuffle his deck and then top deck call something. So see what he does get. And it's gonna be a Melum, so that's definitely it's not, not bad. bad. <laughs> definitely not bad. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't complain about that. It could have been much, much worse. It's definitely one of the best targets you can get actually. Yeah, so we've seen that Jay's already guarded with his TikTok worker. Yeah. So at this point, because he's lost his history maker and the time leap tool. He's probably just going to go for a heart thump, I think. Just so he can mm -hmm. get double melee and into double heart thump into big power yeah. on his favorite. Yeah, there so it is. See this one? Mm -hmm. So let's see if he goes for the second one as well, because that will help him out in terms of hand power as well. And yeah. just. Yeah. It'll help him like mine, uh, make the lead smaller, because he's already a little bit behind. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, see exactly. that uh, he uses like eight cards in hand still, like six, I think. That's seven, like. Yeah, six or seven, something like that. Compared to like Jay's four. Yeah, exactly. Although he hasn't attacked yet, so that'll go to up to at least seven. No, he's on three. He's on three, so he's up to six. Yeah. And then if he gets another Draws one... Draws off a half thumps. Let's see if he goes for the second one. No, he's just gonna go with the Fate Rider to put triggers onto... Yeah, he's no. only gonna use one hard thump, so it's gonna be an extra draw. I think that's fine as well, because then he can always just use the Melon to fetch out either his uh, Wata in preparation for next turn. Yeah. And he or he might go maker. for the, uh, the Gear Cat to set up a defense. Yeah, that's true. There's uh, Wata. Yeah, well, it's not it's not bad having it in hand, so we can always just use Jet G's skill to buy yep. it from hand. It's 21 <clears> on the melon. Yeah, it's definitely also solid. So I think it was worth uh, attacking with the Fate Rider first because now it gets him a pretty strong attack, and Eve is on five, so this definitely does matter. He does have to drop at least a 10k shield to guard this one. No, he's just gonna oh, perfect guard it. Yep. So, oh, this attack was 26 because he got two, two triggers, triggers on yes. it. Yeah. 
So yeah, he would have needed a 15k Two shield, cons. and I assume he didn't have another G guard because he used that on the other one. And there's a gear cat, yeah, as we mentioned before. Especially because we know that uh, we've seen Jay guard with the heal twice already with the vanilla. Yeah. So I think he's trying to bait Eves here, saying, you know, "Oh, like, do you really think I have the third heal there?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think we saw it earlier. I think he does because he drive check. He drive check a stand and a crit. So he didn't. Eves doesn't know whether or not there is a heal there or not. Yeah, that's true. And if nothing else, it just baits out the Calaboom, or just it forces Eves to play around that gear cat in case it's there. Yeah, 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 that's true. But I think just looking at his hand shuffling, I don't think he does have the heal. But you know, he could always top deck a draw. He could always and, bluff it or something. Yeah. yeah. That too. So we'll see. Now it does. We do proceed to Eve's turn, and let's see. Striding. Yeah, yeah. He really dropped the steam breath. So let's see. He's considering the next stage, he does go into the next stage. So he's gonna try to close out the game here. I think that's not a bad idea because Jay is on four damage, and I think seven cards in hand. Yeah, six. That's, yeah, six or seven. And he's going off. He, like, obviously, the if Jay does have the gear cap hetero round defensive play, it's going to interrupt the combo. But even then, once he resolves the next stage, Yves will have 5 face up G, G units. So even his Chrono Jet G will be 21k, which is going to be enough to still force through on the J. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. So let's see. Uh, he's still considering what he's going to do, because obviously, you know, just the next stage isn't going to be enough to close out the game, so he does have to pull out some other combos. I think the question is whether or not he's going to try and either play around the Gear Cat, or he's just going to go for it. I think is what he's considering right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, because. That gear cut is definitely quite scary, and there are ways to get rid of it, but let's see if he does go for it. So he goes for the Melum uh, from the Jet, the Jet G skill, yep. and the Calaboom to get rid of the gear cat. Alright, he so he's miss. not risking it, mm -hmm. he just wants to, you know, stay safe and try to close out the game here without any interruptions. You know, there is the chance that there could be a heal here, so we'll see how this ends up. Now, of course the trade-off he's had to make there is that in making the rest of his attacks more valuable, he's given up, basically given up attack, because the Calibum on its own doesn't do a lot, so he either has to boost it, or he has to call another unit to make it worth attacking with. Yeah, that's true. So he bumps up his um, Delayed Blazer as well, for a nice magical number. He's going to swing for 11, and he just drops the 10k below to block it, and now the next stage attack is coming through. Just for 26. Yep, and, and there's the heal. The heal. That's now Calibum's going to hit. Yep, that definitely counts. And there's a PG as well. And there's a draw. Let's uh, see if we can get the heal. Unfortunate. Uh, nope, don't think that was. I, I think don't it was think a perfect so. guard. Yeah. Or a melon. Might might have been a melon. But we'll see next turn. So he's resolved the next issue. So now that we've got a 16k Jet G for J, with only a 13k Calaboom for Yves. Which again, so now he needs to hit another trigger off of his Chrono Jet G. Yeah, that's true. So let's see how this is going to end up. Because yeah, cause this, this Jet G. So far he has two face-up G units, that's just a plus 5k uh, for now. Yeah, now he has so two, now two he has backings. three. So but, it's a 21k. Yeah. But uh, Jet G only gains 5k for each two face-up. Ah, he does also have the he's G guard. He yeah, did have the G guard, yeah. Okay, so that's going to be 21. And now he's, yeah, he's pretty much no passing it. Yep. And there's a crit. So Calibum is swinging for 18 if I'm not mistaken. Yes, which is just about enough to hit. And there's yep. a 5k shield. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be enough. So Calibum goes back. There seems to be a small ruling issue. It was just a question of how much he needs to guard, because he forgot that he got the Detour Trigger to power. Ah, oh, okay, right, yeah. So now when he comes back, he starts in Jay's turn. Yep. So let's see, he's gonna drop his Steam Breath, let's try it. And let's see what he's gonna do next. He's, I think he's probably gonna get into a next stage here. It's probably his Yeah, I think next stage is a play. pretty good choice. He could do the Gear Groovy next stage, essentially. And I think that's what he's considering, to get himself more oh, face-up. Yeah. yeah. So he wants to get more face-up units to be able to basically just profit off of his uh, Jet G even more, to get more power off of it. And there comes the Lishmar as well. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be... Uh, it's a pretty interesting card. We're going to see more of it a bit later. Uh, but it's definitely... It's a card that didn't see much play uh, before TikTok got banned. And then after the TikTok ban, it was a lot more... Uh, prominent. Yeah, so for those of you at home who don't know what Lishma does off the top of your head, uh, her main skill is that it's not GB1, and at the end of the battle that she boosted a Vanguard, you can Soul Blast 1 and discard a card, and if you do, Time Leap her. I think you have to have a Zodiac Time Beast Vanguard, maybe? I I'm don't not quite sure. remember, but there's some. That's basically the uh, 
the long and short of it. Yeah. And her other skill is that when she comes into play from Bind, you can counter boss one to draw a card, and that's GB1. Yeah. So what he's going to do is here, he's going to attack with the Melem, get a grade zero, probably a uh, Wata, ooh, Calaboo's the Steep, the Delayed Blazer. It's the yeah. line of play. So, no more intercepts, most yeah, likely. Really well, he gets to get the grade one out, mm -hmm. so he gets a tick away, which is definitely not bad as well. Sets up for next turn. Yeah. So what Jay's going to have here, he's going to have the 11k off the Melem, probably finds an Erwata uh, or some other grade zero. It's yeah. going to be a 14k History Maker to time leap whatever. Yeah. Then when he attacks with his Vanguard, he'll have Leashmar, which can time leap into another grade 2. Probably going to be another History Maker. Yeah. Maybe a Delayed Blazer to time leap his History Maker. And then he'll have his Vanguard again, which is a really strong turn here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's definitely capable of closing out the game right here and right now. So we have his first attack going for 11. Eve really needs to be careful. He could bank it on a damage trigger because that turns down the History Maker immediately and any other future 11k pokes that he might try to make. So, let's see if he banks on it or not. He might be willing to, because he does have a fairly healthy hand, and it looks like he's We he saw he had a it. heal trigger last time, yeah. perfect guard. Yep, so he took, he took it, didn't get the damage trigger though, but I think that was, that was probably the best play, because he would be able to turn down that History Maker, that's an extra 5k shield that he saves, that he could be saving for other things, because and he still has... And he's guarding this for 5 of the same value anyway. Exactly, so this Melum is going to be swinging for 11, he still has 2 Vanguard attacks to go through, and you know, there's just going to be more coming through uh, from the Lishma and uh, the History Maker... No, no, History Maker already pulled uh, the Melum out, yeah. but yeah, there's still more coming, and you know, it was definitely worth gambling on that uh, trigger, but it didn't quite work out. So he's probably going to do here is attack with his gear really to like stack triggers onto his melon because obviously it's unboosted at the moment, which is going to be a bit difficult. Yeah, exactly. So from there on, he can then use Lishma on top of that to find either a booster for the melon or a new attacker to replace the history maker, which gives him a full fresh line of attacks. Exactly. So let's see uh, what he he's going to G guard. So probably the yeah. So once it's again, around it's around. Lishma. Yeah, not going to be able to use that Lishma. So that's one time leap that goes just out of the equation. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, around here now, just a quick note is that uh, we're just going to pause and there was a, essentially my camera ran out of uh, space uh, mid-recording, so we're just going to connect the two plates together. So what you've missed uh, during that pause, he resolved the Hetra round and he found a Steam Breath Dragon, which you can see now behind the melon ready to boost. As well as that, he drove check with his Gear Groovy with the next stage skill. Uh, no major triggers that we know other than the stand trigger, so you can Which, see that History yep. Maker is stand with 5k power. Yep. No heals, uh, I don't quite remember what else there was, but at the moment now we just... We finished the Vanguard attack, so now we're just going into the next attack. So now he's gonna go with the... I think this should be just an 18 Melum, but he's just gonna gamble and he does not get the heal. So Eve knew that he couldn't survive that last attack and Jay takes game one. So. That was the first game of the DFUC Finals uh, between Jay and Eve, so make sure to stay tuned for games 2 and possibly, possibly game 3 as well. So I'll see you guys next time, bye bye!